So the genetic racemic resolution is something which has its quirks and is not so an easy concept to come by at first hand. And therefore, I will also present to you another visualization aid in order to get the kinetic implications a little bit easier. This has been used by Professor Wandrei and Stefan Laue. Uh, as first as I have seen that some 20 years ago now. Uh, I don't know whether they have taken it from somewhere, but I attribute it to them. So, what is this all about? First, we take the resonate, so the one to one mixture of enantiomers, as being two reservoirs of same size and, of course, of same level. Yeah? So, you can imagine the amount of R being this reservoir filled to the same level as the reservoir in S. We can then imagine two product reservoirs here at the bottom. And if we connect them, what happens is probably rather easy to understand because these are connected tubes and we will drain these two reservoirs into the product reservoirs. So if you would do this with equal sized tubing and we keep everything very, very the same, then of course what happens in the end of the day is that they will be filled up equally. But this is not the interesting case. So what is now the kinetic implication of that? The kinetic implication is that we have two lines with different diameters. Which still means that both will be drained, but not at the same rate. So if you make this tube much larger than this one, and remember we had a saying that we usually would make this 10 times larger than this one, then the product here will be 10 times higher at some point. Yeah, so this would be a filling here. And if this is 10 times smaller, for example, the filling here would be one tenth of that. Yeah? And if you did then translate these different levels into the metrics, say in Anselmeric Excess, you get the picture we had in the introduction to racemic kinetic resolution. Right, so that is what happened in, happens in kinetic racemic resolution. The point which you actually want is a different one, namely the one I will depict now. Namely the one where all of this is drained only into this reservoir, and these are effectively not connected. And that means that we only get the R product and have the S as a leftover substrate here. Right. Let's return to the intermediate case again. And what is also hard to see sometimes that there will be a point where you can recover an unsecure product, but you will never get in. Whatever you do, there will always be a drainage here, right? And of course, this drainage here translates to a level here. So it means that this actually empties, goes into this reservoir. This also empties, but only to a small extent. If you continue this, you can see that this reservoir will actually be empty at one point. Yeah? So further time. But this will still contain S at this point. So if you then stop the reaction, by whatever means, let's imagine we can have a valve, we can stop the reaction typically by lowering temperature, destroying the enzyme, whatever. And then you will get the picture that you will have everything converted to R. Some S is lost into this not highly pure product here, 
but in Antipure, S remains, which gives you the chance of recovering it to the extent that if you have no other means than to produce it, that's probably better than nothing. Okay, and now let's discuss the third part, which is the dynamic kinetic resolution. How, this, how does that get into the picture here? So dynamic kinetic resolution also has connections here. But there is an extra connection, actually, between the two reservoirs of R and S. So that means that S can drain via R to the product R, or vice versa. Yeah? And what you prefer, of course, is that this region is non-existent. We shut. So we shut that off. Then R is drained, and we also want to make this connection here at, at least as large as the drainage here, otherwise this will limit the direction rate. Yeah? So this would be then the appropriate picture for the dynamic kinetic resolution. You can see here the implications. If you don't shut this off, we will not get an enhanced superior product if both reactions run in parallel here, because they will fill up with time. And due to the resumization taking place here, there will be no excess enantiomer at any time for the resumate here. And this leads to other implications, which I will discuss another input specifically to dynamic kinetic resolution. Thank you for your attention. Oh. That was smooth for a change. <laughs>